Hey everyone, and welcome back to our Thursday Charter Chats. Uh, I'm Michael Barber. It's good to see all of your faces uh, back with us after a few weeks off. I'm really excited to be back on for the next few weeks. We're talking all things special education teacher attention with our guest today, Ingrid Wilson. Ingrid, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, appreciate you being here. Um, I know you're traveling at the moment, so we really appreciate you coming back and having a chat with us uh, as a follow-up to our webinar uh, about two weeks ago. Um, we had about 170 attendees during that webinar and additional questions come in. So do we mind if we just hop right into those questions and have a chat about how we can make sure we're retaining our special education teachers as much as possible? Yeah, let's do it. Wonderful. Okay. Can you share some personal challenges you've encountered while working in uh, special education? And how did you navigate those challenges? Um, there are always challenges in special education. I would say uh, every week, if not on the daily. Um, I think one of the most important things uh, in terms of navigating those challenges is really trying to keep kids at the focus, number one. Um, and then, you know, make, depending on what the challenge is, really making a plan about how you're going to sort of approach things and tackle things um, because um, it can feel like things are sort of always coming at you in the special education world. And so I think it's really important to sort of pause, zoom out, make a plan, and then enter the, the madness once again. Yeah, some great tips there and some great thoughts there. I thought it'd be a good place to, to start the conversation. We got a question as a follow-up from the webinar. Um, and you touched on a little bit of the answer to this question, but I, I thought I'd ask it again. Um, but what are some key tips for creating an environment that supports and retains special education teachers? Um, you know, ultimately, we're hoping to lead to improved outcomes for students with diverse needs. But what are some of those key tips you, you touched on during our conversation related to creating that environment that supports and retains special education teachers? Yeah, I think um, so it's important to, for the school to be inclusive and that also extends to the staff being inclusive, but also recognizing um, the unique needs of those, of those teachers that you have. So um, in addition to, you know, making sure that they have, you know, equitable access to resources, also paying attention to their unique needs and some things that they may need that are outside of the outside of what a typical general education teacher uh, might be, and I think a lot of that comes down to, you know, the culture of a school and being able to um, being able to uh, walk that line between, you know, the fairness aspect of things, um, which comes up a lot when you're talking with special education teachers and general education teachers, um, but it's really about you know, equity and making sure everyone understands the role that each person is bringing to the table. You mentioned some specific initiatives um, or practices that uh, made differences for retaining special education teachers during our conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago. Can you mention a, a couple of those key points that you mentioned? Yeah, so a lot of it, I think, comes down to that balance between um, the paperwork side of things and uh, the instructional piece of things. So, you know, structuring a teacher's day intentionally, recognizing those pieces is really important. Um, some folks ha have the ability to provide paperwork days or, you know, a half day. Um, some folks allow that half day to be, off, you know, off campus um, or working remotely. Um, and those kinds of perks um, really do sort of allow a special education teacher to get their work done within the regular work day. Teachers are working late, long hours all the time anyway. Um, but in order to have a prayer uh, as a special education teacher of having, you know, a work-life balance, you really need time within the school day, at least some, to get to get a lot of that work done. Yeah, it's such a good point. I want to pause here for a second and just welcome. We do have a f we have a few viewers that are live with us. So if you've got questions for Ingrid, 
we're more than happy to take those uh, live. I'll ask another one, but pop them into the chat. If you're on a browser, it's on the right-hand side. If you're on mobile, it's just below our stream right here. So feel free to ask any questions you've got. Um, you mentioned uh, last time we talked um, some pro that professional development opportunities and tra training programs were crucial for special education teachers to be able to continue to uh, you know enhance their skills and knowledge. Can you talk about the importance of those? And if you've got any ideas on what types of places the uh, school leaders should be recommending uh, special education teachers go look for those development opportunities that you've heard of in your experience? I'd be all ears for that uh, sort of I, mm -hmm. some of those uh, recommendations as well. Yeah, um, I think all teachers want to be good at their jobs. That's why everyone sort of goes into the profession is to make a difference um, for students. And um, the preparation that many of our special education teachers get is, you know, sometimes alt license or, um, you know, doing one of these alternative programs. That's very, um, you know, we see that a lot in all schools and definitely in charters. Um, but from, from there, um, you know, teachers are going to need a lot of professional development in order to be able to feel successful because they um, because their preparation programs aren't going to prepare them for every single thing that they need to do. Um, and it's critical that they have those opportunities to grow so that they can, you know, sustain in a profession because they feel like they are doing a good job. Um, some recommendations I would have um there are some really amazing resources on the national center for intensive intervention website and they are completely free um you can do a self-paced module they have different formats they have articles but all of those are really research-based and i think that's a key thing is what is the research really you know telling us about what works for students with diverse learning needs and um, how are we, you know, accessing that research in order to drive the professional development that needs to happen? Um, I want to grab that URL for those listening. Is that is that the? Uh, it, it, let me just make sure I got it. Intensiveintervention.org. Am I grabbing the right URL? Um, let me make. Let me check. And I do love these live formats because yes. we can go do that and yep. go grab them as we're as we're sitting here. So we make sure that's the website, correct? That is the website. And that really, Wonderful. you know, if if teachers could uh, understand all of the pieces of that website, we'd have a very different, <laughs> a very different world um, in special education. There are some fantastic resources also about um, specific literacy programs, progress monitoring all kinds of links um, you can find in there to to get some really good stuff. Lovely. I've popped that into the chat um, uh, so that anybody that's watching this can grab that URL. Uh, one question that we spent a little bit of time on during the webinar was the questions that school leaders can ask or tailor to specific uh, interview questions to assess candidates' understanding of special education practices. Um, and one you recommended uh, got a lot of agreement in our discussion there from viewers related to IEP paperwork. And I was hoping you might be able to either share that question or any other questions as thought starters for school leaders to be able to ask when they are uh, recruiting and, and hiring candidates for these positions. Yeah, um, I think the question was around what would you what is the sort of approach that you would take if you are starting a new position as a special education teacher and you come in and realize that you're inheriting some issues within the department, uh, paperwork compliance issues, um, things like that, sort of what's the plan of attack. Um, and that's going to get at like a lot of soft skills, but then also technical skills about what are the actual like legally defensible ways to approach a problem like that. Um, I think there are also, um, I wrote a couple down because I thought you were going to ask me this. Um, <laughs> one was that I, that I wrote down was, um, 
how do you determine the frequency and duration of services for a student in their IEP? Um, again, a lot of it is just listening to how teachers talk about these things, how they're, um, you know, how that what their what their thought process is and their thinking. Um, but also, you'll get those like, what types of skills do they know? Is the answer I have no idea, and I'm really excited to learn. Or, you know, what are, what, what's the response to that? And, and, and how does, how are you ready or not to, to sort of bring that person along if they're going to need a lot of support? Great questions there to think about for school leaders as they're uh, looking to hire these candidates uh, for these positions. Um, I know at Project, Project Idea, you offer a platform called Manage. Can you give it a, give us a brief outline of how it benefits school leaders, particularly for um, our special education teachers? Absolutely. So um, there's a whole bunch of tasks that special education teachers have to do that really have nothing to do with students. Obviously, writing IEPs and sort of the IEP process is critical for student learning. But along with that process comes all of these little logistical tasks, um, sending out emails and surveys and um, finding meeting times and sort of wrangling a bunch of people around scheduling. And so managed automates and streamlines those processes as well as sort of supports a school to, um, to share out the resources that they have that are going to support their teachers. So teachers get essentially prompted within their email to do whatever step they need to do based on the timeline of the IEP process um, that is calculated automatically by the system. And then it also will say, hey, this is what you need to do. And here's that, you know, the link to the document that shows you how to do it. And so the idea is really about changing practices by grounding in documents and then streamlining and making things as automated as possible um, because th that technology exists. Um, and so. Yeah, I think that um, just an incredible platform for, uh, as you've talked about, is how do we make sure that the school leaders, especially when it comes to special education, can be focused on students and the outcomes of those students um, and taking the the workload, the caseload, the cadence, the project management time, and just, uh, you know, brain power to get those tasks done. And I think that's what uh, your platform does so well. Um, for those of us that are joining us live, for those of you I, uh, are, who are joining us live, I should say, uh, we are both, both Ingrid and our charter school capital team are headed to Austin next week for the National Charter Schools Conference. So if you have questions for Ingrid and want to do a follow up and you're heading down to Austin for uh, what will I would imagine will be two incredible days, two or three incredible days of learning from uh, a bunch of school leaders from thought leaders and voices from around our space. Uh, feel free to go find Ingrid um, at, or myself uh, or the Charter School Capital team, and we can get you connected um, uh, while you're there. But Ingrid, I just want to uh, say a big thank you to you for joining us on our webinar a couple of weeks ago and for taking some time today. We're right at that sort of 10 to 12 minute mark, and we like to respect that boundary. And I know you're on vacation, so I want to give you as much time back uh, where you are. Uh, but thank you again for joining us uh, on the webinar and today. Um, and for anybody that wants any more information about Project IDEA, we'll leave this last question and wrap it up from here. Where can they find out more information about Managed and Project IDEA? Um, folks can reach out to me directly at Ingrid at project-idea.org. Um, our website is project-idea.org. And if you want to go straight to manage backslash managed, um, and we'd love to see you next week if you're at the Charter Conference in Austin. Lovely. Well, hopefully safe travels from the vacation, safe travels to Austin. Um, and we'll be back uh, on Thursday for a follow-up to tomorrow's webinar on all things cybersecurity. So if you feel like having a conversation related to cybersecurity, come on back. We'll see you here on YouTube again for a few minutes for our Charter Chat series uh, on Thursday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.